everybody, I'm Allie and welcome to Gertie Standard Designs. Today we're going to be using our funny little doggone scooter roaming by our digital stamp and we're going to be creating some paper toll images using this little fella here and that's why I have multiples printed out. So let's get started here today. First I've taken the same sized image so I took one image and resized it to whatever I wanted and then I duplicated it four times in my photo, photo editing and printed them all out together. So with Paper Toll, you need multiple images to create a layered and three-dimensional image. So that's where now I'm going to kind of go through our way of thinking of how to build him up to make him look three-dimensional. Okay. So we always start with, or I always start with uh, one image that is completely whole, meaning that I don't cut it apart in any way, shape, or form. The only reason I have um, post-it notes over my Im images is just, just that people can't take snapshots of the image and uh, recreate it. So our little guy here is sitting on his little scooter and we want to make him three-dimensional. So, so now we want to figure out what needs to be on the top of the image, what needs to be in the middle, and what needs to be on the lower or the back of the image to make him look three-dimensional. So I'm going to say the thing that needs to be on the front or the top of the image is probably his, his, probably his scarf maybe. This would be the top layer would be his scarf and then maybe the second layer might be his whole body. So the dog is the number two layer. This is the number one. And then in the background I think pretty much that whole scooter. So this is my third layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of my four images and I'm going to color them according to what I'm going to cut out. So number one I'm going to color one of these with just colored scarf. Then the second one I'm going to take and I'm just going to color in the puppy. And then my third layer, I'll probably keep it whole, but only color in the scooter. All right? This will make sense um, towards the end as we put things together. So I'm going to speed up the coloring process and then we'll get to putting everything together. All right. And away we go.
and that's only like cutter bead and I cut around all my images. Now I did do on some of the areas where I'm going to put stuff over top, like this guy's going to go over top, uh, I kind of did a little bit of back cutting so I cut more so into the image and cut past those lines and that just allows for this guy to go on without anything peeking out from underneath that I have to deal with. So, but it still leaves something to glue this guy onto. All right, the next step is, is to, to take my gray marker. This is a cool gray marker from uh, the multi-liner series and just go around all the edges. It just gives that finishing detail and any of that white core paper that's on the, showing on the edges there disappears. So I'm gonna do that to all of my images and I'll be right back. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a foam pad. So this is a foam pad here. It's got a little bit of felt on this side and we're also going to use some styluses. Styluses come in many sizes. I have three different sizes in my tool set um, and then we're going to use those on our images and this is how we're going to do that. So let's zoom in a little bit better here for you guys. So you always want to do this part on the back side. And I'm going to start with my, <coughs> excuse me, my larger stylus. And what this does is it breaks down those paper fibers and allows you to add a little bit of curvature to your paper. So this is really hard to see, but if you look close enough, and of course you can feel it a lot more than you can see it, is that this wheel, because I've used that stylus and pushed that paper out, um, that wheel is now a little bit more dimensional than it was. And of course you can go in with your smaller tools and get right in there. So you want to do it um, for each piece that you have, but only do the layer that is going to be um, popped up, or the layer that's colored, basically. And you can do it um, as detailed as you want, because you can go in with this little teeny stylus here, and you could do just the tires. It doesn't really show up that great, but you can definitely try it. So you're gonna do that to all the layers that are colored. So this, this guy is actually flat. I haven't touched him with the stylus, but I've touched his uh, little scooter there. So I'm going to go and do all the rest of my pieces and give them some curve and texture. I'm not going to bother with the little piece because it just makes it too hard to glue it down. So you can decide what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Give a little bit of curvature to the scarf and as it glues down you will lose <laughs> some of that over curl and then I'm gonna leave his helmet you can see his helmet and his scarf there don't have any color and do his little schnout and his ears a little tiny bit to his paws not too much some to his body some to his feet and just slightly out to the end of the tail I'm gonna leave the tip untouched. Okay, so like I said, you can go in with more detail and go smaller, but that's generally what you want. You want some curvature to your pieces. So you can see that some of them are quite curved. Okay, so let's get on to creating the back of our finish him off and make him a 3D element. So now we're going to put our little three-dimensional fella together. Um, I'm using Oba glue. This is universal transparent glue and it is a very dimensional as you can see. Look, <laughs> looks like toothpaste. It's actually thicker than tooth toothpaste. So I've got a few uh, just good old toothpicks here and the thing with this glue is that you want to know that keep it within the areas that you want it because if you put it on an area where you don't want it, it leaves a shiny um, 
residue and you, even though you try to scrape it off you cannot get that shiny shiny part off so you have to be very careful where you put this so we're going to start from the bottom and layer to the top so we're going to put this guy on and I find it easier to apply the glue to the thing that is cupped so you can use your Use your toothpick and spread it toward the edges, but don't put it anywhere close to the edge because that's where things go wrong and things seep out. So I'm just going to try and keep it to the center of my image, especially the, the highest part or the deepest valley of where where you want your glue because it becomes your building blocks of keeping things in its three-dimensional state. Now you can squeeze it right from the tube but the tube has a rather large opening. See it's not like a detailed um, end so just be aware of that. I think it's a lot easier to apply it using some other method. You could even use a little tiny brush if you wanted to. So I'm going out even on his scarf. I'm not going to put a lot on the scarf because this is just a base to glue to. I'm just going to spread that out a bit. Oh, and this is why I work on the back and not work on here and put glue on there. I'm going to do a little bit under his leg. I'm just going to bring just a really smooth tiny bit out to his paws that are going to go on that little scooter there just because I want to make sure that they get glued down and I'm going to do a touch on the back of his nose too bring this out just a bit more like I said don't put too too much and keep it away from the edges this is where your lovely tweezers come in play. All right. So you're going to carefully put him on top of his image. Carefully. Ugh. All right. Sorry, I'm out of frame here. And you're going to match up the pieces. Where they need to be matched up. There we go. Okay. And I'm just giving it a little bit of a press, not trying not to lose that curvature. Okay. And I've got a little bit of my desk, so I'm just gonna use my fingers. Alright. So we're looking good. Okay. Now we're going to go on and do his helmet and his scarf, and the same thing applies. I think we'll do his helmet first. Don't need a lot. More so wherever the dimension, the, the valley is in that image. I'm going to do a tiny, tiny, get my toothpick a little bit cleaner here. See if I can just... You could also use your other glue on this part too, like your uh, Gina K or your uh, Tombow, whatever works for you. Okay, so you've got to be really careful with that piece of his chin strap there because that's where it's going to move if it's going to move. So you're just going to kind of hold it in place just for a few seconds just to make good contact with everything down below. There we go. Now this stuff takes um, a fair amount of time to dry obviously because it is thick and dimensional. And see I've rubbed it on his chin. I think I can get it to stay here. You can also use your reverse tweezers to uh, keep that in place too, but I don't have any right now. And 
like a scarf. Don't need a lot. <laughs> and I don't need any on my nails. There we go. And of course this one has lots of curvature to it, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging to get it to stay. There we go, that's not too bad. I think it's stuck to its little... Nope. <laughs> now you can, of course, <laughs> put a little bit of a heavy weight, like your acrylic block or something on it to keep it down. Just like I think we're going to have to do with the helmet here because it's not cooperating. And this, and of course I see a little bit of this will be delicate for about 24 hours. It needs to sit and dry. Got a little bit of helmet showing behind here, so I'm just going to take my scissors and cut that away just because it's peeking out from behind there and I don't want it to. So, like I said, I'm gonna put something with a little bit of oomph and we're going to put that on top of those two pieces because it just doesn't want to stay and it's and this stuff moves so we have to it's finicky but it's so much fun when everything's finished there we go okay everything's in place everything is I'm gonna leave it like that for a little while and he now has become a cute little adorable dimensional fellow riding his scooter. So I'm going to create the back of my card, let him dry, and I'll come back with our finished card. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate that you've come to see what I'm up to. And I hope you have a great week. Thanks, guys.